Okay, so the last time we met, I believe we were working on the player controller and the um, uh, the time conversion stuff. And also, do we work on the checkpoint manager? I don't remember. Let's just take a look at all these. So no, we didn't do anything there. Did we do game engines? Oh, we did, okay. Checkpoints? No, do we not? We didn't work on any of those, huh? Okay, and, but we did do the functional, right? Oh, no, we haven't done anything. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to, let's go to our player controller, take a look at that. And let me um, open up. By the way, if you guys have any questions, just um, ask away. And, oh man. There is, oh, uh, this is self player controller. Let's make sure I'm matching up everything. Oh, I grabbed, I grabbed the wrong one. That's okay. Um, that is okay. So update time, let's go to this guy. In time, that looks good, that looks good. Case erase complete. Oh, this update lap, oh, we didn't do up, no, we didn't do this connection. And we don't have lap check in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, right here in our lap logic on update lap uh, custom event is we're gonna do a lap check at the end. And it's gonna go right here. And we're also going to, let's see, what is this? This is uh, adjust lap time, players current lap, this blah, blah, blah. And we are going to, if, so if the race is complete, then we're just going to do a lap check right here. And it's going to go like that. But actually, actually, we're going to make a disconnection right here. And this is a temporary, temporary fixes. So let's go to, uh, lap text, current lap text, where is that at? Current lap text, there it is. We're gonna do a getter. Um, and then I'm actually going to, instead of it going straight into our lap check, actually I'll just make these smaller so you can see what I'm doing. So instead of the true going into the lap check like it is now, I'm actually gonna go into the string like that. Um, and so what'll happen is if, if the race is not complete, then it'll go through this actual lap and adjust it. Oh, do I not have the right? Uh, oh, this is this is the right one because it's not doing a time; it's just doing an integer. Anyway, so just as a lap gives me the uh, sets the current lap text, and then uh, current lap is whatever. Otherwise, it'll uh, finish and say, "Hey, the, the player's current lap is what." Oh, you know what? It, I don't need to say that. I take that back. We can just go straight this way. Let me just go straight that way. This was a waste, my bad. Because we don't care about, the, if the race is done, we don't care about the current lap, uh, what lap the player is currently on. The race is sort of done. So that, that looks good. Um, and then what else do we have? Oh, uh, we have update goals. Oh, okay, we don't, I didn't do that one. Spawn vehicle, we didn't do that one. Is it blurry for anyone else? Is it blurry for you guys? Um, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so let's see. What do we need to do now? Um, oh, we didn't do that. It's fine. Let's go to this. Equal selection. Let's do respawn vehicle. Spawn her vehicle. Okay, I think I already have that. Let's see. Start race, respawn current vehicle. It's a current vehicle, yada, yada, yada. That's cool. Okay. And then, um, oh, actually what we wanna do, oh wait, where's the response? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, it's a function right there, we're good. I'm just looking at, 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 this is actually, here, I'll just show you guys. So this is, this is the notes I'm looking at and I actually, I'm on a new computer and so, um, it, I, this is actually the old, this old, this is the oldest one I've built. This is like the first one I built. So, um, and I, the one I have is not the right one, but that's okay. We can still do it. Let's, um, let's go ahead and we'll save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to checkpoint manager. So that's going to be in our core. 
checkpoint manager. We'll open that guy up. And then I'm going to go to this one. And we are going to go to our event graph. And the first thing we need to do is, um, let's see, we need to have, no, we need that begin play. We're going to need that, but we're going to make some custom events. So custom event, the first one's going to be apply settings, apply settings. And uh, so our checkpoint managers, it manages all of the, uh, all of the checkpoints in the level, right? So, it'll, uh, it, you know, we don't have any checkpoints yet, but when we do, uh, it'll manage all of them. And it'll say, it'll say, you know, which checkpoint is the player at? Show that one, stop showing the other ones and so on and so forth. All right, so the first thing we have to do is apply whatever settings to all the checkpoints uh, based off of whatever the designer does. And of course, you guys are designers, but um, the idea here is that we would be able to pass it off to somebody else. Uh, so we're gonna do another custom event. It's gonna be start sequence. And this is uh, starting the sequence of all the checkpoints. So we're gonna get all the checkpoints and then we're gonna say, hey, checkpoint one is the first one that should be active and wait until the player activates the next checkpoint. Now at checkpoint two is active and so on and so forth, right? So we're starting the sequence of checkpoints. Um, and then I think that's all the uh, custom events we need. Um, yeah, okay, so, um, so we need some functions. So we're gonna go to functions here. And uh, first one is gonna be update times. And this is just uh, you know, the same thing for checking the time earlier. Uh, we're gonna do a lap check, which is very similar to uh, what we did in the player controller. We're, uh, we're checking to see is it is the player done with all the laps, right? So uh, that's actually the best lap, but there's a there's a lap check, a race check or something like that. Um, but the idea is that uh, once the lap, once all the laps have been completed, then we're gonna say the race is done. Uh, the next thing we need is activate check checkpoint. And um, so this is like the player has gone through a checkpoint, activate the next one. And then uh, we're gonna have a race complete function. Uh, race complete check. Um, yep. And then what else do we need? We need some custom settings here. So let's go to variables. Um, we're going to add do uh, max laps. And this is going to be an integer. So in my variables type, we're going to go to integer. And uh, also in the category, we're going to call this um, uh, custom settings. And this is going to be exposed, meaning that the designer can uh, manipulate those values. Then we need a goal time, and that is going to be exposed as well. It is going to be a float, and it's going to be uh, also part of the custom settings. And then I'm going to duplicate this, and we need a silver time, and then we need a bronze time. Uh, then we need a default uh, best time lap and a default um, best time, uh, best best race time. Wait, uh, so what's the key? What's the short key to duplicate the variables? Um, it's Control W for for uh, Unreal Four and uh, Control D for Unreal Five. But if you right click any of the variables, you can get the commands. So right here, Control W. It's a good question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, then we need a uh, name of map, or we could even do track if you wanted to. Um, this would be displayed to the player. Uh, what do we want? It could be text. Um, and then what else do we need? We need uh, checkpoints. And uh, this type is going to be unique. Uh oh, echo, 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 echo. Echo. All right, I muted Rob. Uh, okay, where was that? Checkpoints, variable type is actually gonna be BP checkpoint. And so here it is right here, BP checkpoint, and we're gonna do an object reference. And then we're gonna change the type from a single variable. So I clicked on this little icon right here, from the single variable to this rubric skew, you're, you're good. Um, to, uh, the Rubik's Cube is an array. So it's an array of checkpoints, uh, right? Because it, the checkpoint manager manages all of the checkpoints. So 
that's going to be exposed and it's going to be very important. This is going to be very important for us to, um, uh, if this is empty or it's incorrect, then, then this manager is not going to work correctly. Um, okay, so what else do we need? We need total checkpoints, checkpoints. And this is an integer, so we'll go back to integer. We're going to change it back to a single variable. And then we need a um, player controller reference. So we'll get that in just a second. So let's compile and save all this. Uh, then we'll go into our components. We're going to do a scene, root, replace the default root. We're going to go into billboard, billboard. And this is just going to be a billboard that shows it in the world, right? So without the billboard, if I remove it, let's remove it, compile. I'm going to put our checkpoint manager in the world. And there's no nothing to identify for our designers. Of course, the player will never see the manager, but our designers need to be able to see it and click on it in the world or, or in the world online, right? So that's why we add a billboard. So we'll add a billboard now, compile. And um, I should see it. I'm not sure why you don't see it. Let's see. I'll remove that one and let's put a new one in there. Oh, oh yeah, it's there. It's just very tiny. There it is. So now you can see it. Um, okay, so that's that. And now what let's shape is that? It's just it's just a sprite. So we can change it to whatever. Oh, we want. oh okay. Yeah, we can do uh, oops, this will target wrong. So we can do like a target. Oh, I don't uh view option. Oh no, what have I done? View options. So I die in, in multiplayer games because I click on the wrong thing. Yeah, so here we are, target icon. And and now it's a target. See? So you can just change it to whatever you want. Right. What what uh object is the billboard? What object type, I guess? It's a billboard component. Oh, okay. So if you go to components, you type in billboard, you'll find it right there. And oops, let's do the raptor again. All right, uh, good questions. Okay, so begin play. First thing we need to do is we need to get uh, the player controller so we know what player is, um, what player is uh, playing, right? And of course, it's gonna be a single player game or we're building it as a single player game. It's only gonna be one player. Uh, there are actually better ways to do this. And the better way to do this is called uh, uh, doing an interface. Uh, but I'm going to show you this way because it's just easier and, and uh, it's not this cast is not going to be too much of a cost. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm typing in cast to BP player controller. And that's this one right here, our BP player controller. Right. And then uh, our object is going to be uh, the player controller itself. So I'm just doing get player controller. There it is right there. And uh, then we're gonna make this a reference. So we're gonna promote it to variable BP player controller. All right, cool. So now we have that for, for later when we need it and we will. Um, okay, so what else do we need to do? Okay, so after we get the player controller, um, the next thing we're gonna do, and actually just in case this cast fails, which it could, we're gonna do a sequence here. And so after this, goes through and whether it fit, fails or succeeds, we're gonna do apply settings. That's firing this custom event. And then we're gonna do start sequence. And that's gonna fire this custom event down here, right? Um, let's see, we could also, since this is a cast, we could also do this. So this is good because we wanna make sure it goes into our logs. So we'll just turn it off on print string. And we'll just make it go to our logs. It's going to be warning. Uh, what is this? This is EP checkpoint manager was unable to pass to the BP player controller. All right. It's always good idea to have your your warnings in there and all that and errors and stuff like that. Um, but we, we shouldn't have any issues. This should work, no problem. Okay, good programming practices. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? Let's go into, uh, we'll go into our max laps. So we're gonna grab our max laps here and we're gonna uh, set 
the max laps in our player controller. So if you remember, our player controller is um, right here, this max lap. It's just getting all the values from whatever, whatever um, track we're on. So, uh, so this, the checkpoint manager sets the track up how we want it to be. And then the player controller goes, okay, what track am I on? I'm on, you know, XYZ track. Okay, get the laps and all the times and all that, and then set them. That's what this apply setting is. So we're gonna get max laps from our player controller and we're gonna do, uh, sorry, not, not get, we're gonna set the uh, max laps from the player controller as whatever it is for this particular track. And then we are going to um, update times, update times. And uh, this, this update times is going to be us uh, sending all of the um, values that we set here to the player controller so that uh, the player controller knows what um, the times are for this particular track. Where do I get the um, BP player controller? Um, so it should be right here. We just cast a BP player controller and we saved it as a, as a variable. And so now there it is right there. So when we're casting too, we're just sending variables back and forth. No, a cast is just saying, a cast is saying, hey, um, I, I want to get, I want to get this object and do something inside this object but I don't know exactly what this object is. So what I'm using is a player controller and I'm saying, hey, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, morphology or something like that. And it's, it, it's basically morphing this parent actor into this very specific child of this parent actor and say, saying, give me the specific one. And then, and then now it's saved inside this blueprint as a reference. And so I can use it in this blueprint. It's saved in memory in this particular blueprint and I can use it. Um, and then later um, I can want, because it's saved in memory in this particular blueprint, I can say, okay, now go and set those values. You know, you already found the, uh, the reference of the player controller, now do things to it. <laughs> Make sense? Um, so we're gonna come out of this yes. player controller and I'm assuming you said, yes, I, I didn't catch it, sorry. You got it? Did yeah, I got it, thank you. Okay, okay, yeah, cool. Uh, okay, player controller, we're gonna come out of this guy. We're gonna do start game setup. So again, if we go back to our player controller, we've got our event graph, here's our start game setup. It finds the player start and sets the respawn point and then starts the race. So it's like a little back and forth going on here, like R Rob said. Um, but uh, we're gonna do a reroute node and we'll line those up, looks good. And I'm um, here, I'll even do this. So this, uh, this is apply settings, obviously. And what this does is updates the um, track times of the track itself to the um, player controller um, when the game starts. You don't have to do the comments. Okay, so uh, that's good. We'll save that. Start sequence, we'll go to this guy. Okay, start sequence. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna get all of our checkpoints and then we're gonna do a, a for each loop, for each loop meaning we're gonna iterate through all of those checkpoints. We're going to um, get the checkpoint itself. Oh, I haven't built everything yet inside so the checkpoint. It's gonna, it's gonna not work out the way you want. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Okay, we can do this. Let's come out of this guy and we're gonna, we're gonna do a reroute node. And then we're gonna come out of this reroute node. We're gonna type in length. So we're gonna need that. And then we're gonna do a getter, uh, get a copy, I think. Yeah, get a copy, this one right here. So we're gonna need those. And length is going to be 
our total checkpoints. So we're going to grab our total checkpoints variable that we created earlier. And we're going to set it like this, right? So the amount of checkpoints, that's the length, right? So if there's 15 checkpoints, there's, that's the total number of checkpoints. And that will go into our completer here. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, I have another for each loop. Oh, I can, I can do that after, that's fine, okay. And then we will do um, another node coming out of here and it's gonna be for each loop again. And it's gonna connect like that. And uh, this is gonna have a binding, which we'll, we'll get to in just a second. Um, okay, so let's compile and save that. Let's see what else can we mess with. Let's go to our update times and our update times in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our uh, player controller and we're gonna get all of the times in there. So we need gold time. Uh, sorry, we're gonna actually not, we're not getting the times, we're setting the times. So set gold time, uh, set silver time, set the uh, bronze time. What are the other ones? Um, best. Uh, set best race, uh, sorry, set default best lap time and uh, default best uh, race time. Yeah, those guys. And we'll bring these to the bottom. All right. So this, are, this is all come from the player controller. And now we're just gonna get our gold time. This is gonna go to gold time, silver time. It's gonna go to silver. Bronze is gonna go to bronze. And best lap time, our default best lap time. Actually, you know what, we should rename this best lap time so it's not confusing. And then best default best race time. All right, clean this up a little bit. Make that one go that way. All right, there we go. And then we just connect our execution pin, right? So we're just, it's gonna flow. It's gonna pulse this one. Then we're gonna grab this guy. It's gonna go there. It's gonna pulse our silver. Then this one is gonna go into our bronze. It's gonna pulse the bronze. And then this one's gonna go to our default best time. It's gonna pulse that one. And then, uh, it's gonna put the last one here, best race time, it's gonna pulse, right? And that's how we update all of our times based off of whatever we put here, whatever the designer puts right there. And then later, if we get to the HUD part, which hopefully we will, uh, we'll be able to display this to the player on the HUD, right? As they're like racing around and stuff. Um, okay, so let's do lap check. Um, we might not be able to do lap check. Um, uh, what, what we can do to lap check, let's go to lap check, is we can add a, um, an input. So I have the purple lap check node selected in the details panel, input, new parameter. And we're just gonna type in checkpoint and we are going to make it an integer. And we'll leave that like that for now, I think. Let's see, do I need anything out of here? Checkpoints, active reach. Oh, I do need that. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Let's see, what else can we do? Activate next checkpoint. Okay, yeah, we can do that. So let's go to activate next checkpoint. And um, we need another input. So with that node selected, inputs, new parameter, this one is going to be BP uh, checkpoint. Actually, it's going to be BP, or it's going to be next BP checkpoint. That's what it's supposed to be, next BP checkpoint. And we're going to do BP checkpoint and object reference. And we'll compile that and save. Um, and then what else do we need? We need uh, race complete check. So let's go to that one. And what do we need here? So we're gonna to go to our player controller or grab a reference or our player controller, sorry. We're gonna check the actual apps. 
So get actual apps, and we're going to do get max apps. And if uh, this is the actual apps is greater than or equal to our max laps, should never be greater than, but uh, let's just assume. Then um, what do we need to do? Then we need our player controller and we need to say uh, race, set race complete. And um, yeah. And we'll go like this. I'll grab this again. And I'm connecting the same player controller into the target right here. And that's going to go like this. And now this is very important. If the race is complete, right, if the actual lapse equals the R is greater than the max lap, then the race is complete. So we're going to check it. Otherwise, the race is not complete, right? <clears throat> and then we need to um, we need to have a return node. So let's do return, add return. And in our return node, we're going to go to outputs here. So I have the return node selected, outputs, and I'm going to do is race complete. And this is just going to be a Boolean. And uh, we're going to connect this guy like that. And so you'll notice that we have a problem now. So if I connect this guy, that looks good but I can't connect this guy. You see, I can only connect one. So if it's only one, then it'll all, it'll never be true, right? I'm sorry, it'll never be false. Now it'll never be true because it can never, or this return value, of course, this is true, this is correct, but the return value is what's important here. Um, so we can fix this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag out from the sky, we're gonna make a local variable. You can see right here, and we're just gonna call this local condition local uh, uh, with a lower lowercase l and then condition. And then we're gonna connect this guy like that and that guy like that. And I'm gonna grab this local condition again. We're gonna connect that guy like that and that guy like that. Now I can grab the local condition and place it like that. So when it's done like that, does that just allow it to check both both ways and then apply it? Exactly, because we're setting the local condition in this in this variable. Um, another way we could do this, and I, I want I wanted to show you this because this, the, we do that sometimes. Another way we can do this, we can do this: get race complete, and just connect it in like that. So we could totally do it this way, right? Because we're setting the race complete value right here, either whether it's true or false, we're setting it. And then we're going to uh, spit it out to our return value. So you can totally do that too. And as a matter of fact, we'll leave it that way. Um, but I did want to show you guys how to do that the, um, with a, a local variable involved in this function. All right, so what else do we need? That looks good, that looks good, that looks good. We'll save. And now let's go to our checkpoint. So BP checkpoint, let's start here. And let me get to the checkpoint guy. All right, so checkpoints. First thing we need is a scene component. Why do we need this to root? Get rid of our default scene root, I hate those things. Let's add a, um, a box collision. And this is going to be our uh, collision volume. And then we need an arrow. And this is going to be the flow of the checkpoint, right? So if the player goes uh, this way, let's see if I can do a snipping here, snip tool. Um, so what I mean by this is if the player is snazzy and they're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive this way through, through my the box here, right? I'm going to drive that way. Uh, we're not going to count it. It's not going to be good. The same thing, 
racer tool. Hello. No, no, no racing. Okay, same thing if they, they go backwards, right? They try to go backwards to the, check, the checkpoint. We don't want that. We're gonna make sure that they're going the correct way through the checkpoint. So that's what this arrow is for. And then, um, yeah, that's actually all we need, those two things. Uh, let's, I wanna adjust this arrow though. I want it to go through the check to the collision volume. And I also do not want it to be a child. So I'm gonna attach it to our root. Uh, so first thing, collision volume here is I am going to sort of shape it. Um, actually, you know what we can do is we're going to throw a checkpoint in the world. That's fine. And then we also, let's also throw in a car. So I'm gonna go to the vehicle variety pack, blueprints, box truck, since the box truck is probably the biggest one. I'm just gonna throw it in the world. We're gonna get rid of this later, but we're just throwing it in the world so we can get an idea of how big of a checkpoint we need to make. So um, yeah, it, obviously it needs to be much bigger. Scales up a little bit and I'm gonna shrink it. So it's more like a checkpoint. And uh, yeah, that looks okay actually. That's the box truck. I want the checkpoint selected. And technically the checkpoint is this big. So what we could do is um, let's, if you can't tell it's the, the grid here, that's the ground. I'm gonna move this up and then actually now I can sort of scale, scale this down. And, uh, put it down. Yeah, there we go. And now this will be on the ground. That's cool. It might be a little too big, but it's okay. All right, so now we can get rid of the box truck and we definitely don't need this checkpoint anymore. We'll get rid of that. And now we have the scale that we need. So I'm gonna grab this arrow and I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and I'm gonna make it bigger by going into the details panel, arrow component, and I'm gonna adjust to like 200 maybe, maybe, maybe like 500, wow, 500. And then we'll make the arrow size like, I don't know, three or four or something like that. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a little long, let's do 300. Okay, cool. And then I'm, uh, yes. That checkpoint, right? That checkpoint will like, it'll fit any cars, right? Like uh, whether yes. it's a box truck or, right? Yeah. Yes, because we made it the size of the box truck. Okay. Right? And the box truck is the biggest vehicle in our game. So it should be fine. Um, okay, so uh, I don't want the arrow to be like starting in the middle here and then shooting outward. I want it to be like going through the checkpoint to let us let the designer know this is the direction of the checkpoint. This is the way you have to put it. Um, and so if we drop a checkpoint again, so let's go back to core and we'll drop another checkpoint into the world. And you can see now like, okay, right? So like designer, you need to sort of set um, the direction of the checkpoint like this, right? If they, if they drop one and they do it this way, <laughs> the player is gonna have to go around and come back because that's the flow of, of the race. Make sense? All right, so let's get rid of these checkpoints again. And I'm actually gonna shrink this arrow again to about like 200 or something, just a little bit. And I don't like red. I'm gonna change it to green because red means stop, green means, go, or maybe actually in San Antonio, red definitely means go. Yellow means go faster. Okay, so what do we need? We need some functions. So first function we're gonna call it's gonna be verify, verify a completed checkpoint. Checkpoint. And we're gonna need some variables. So add variable, it's gonna be checkpoint number, point number, and that is going to be an integer. And then we'll do another one, it's gonna be vehicle selection. Uh, can I spell vehicle, maybe, selection. And this is going to be our EM vehicle selection from our, from our enum from earlier. Um, and then, do we need a player controller? We do need a player controller. Um, 
ah, we need the player controller because, um, okay, that's fine. We need it because we need to verify which vehicle went through the um, uh, the spawn or the, the checkpoint. Uh, oh, and then we need an event dispatcher. So event dispatcher is going to be checkpoint cleared. And so what event dispatcher does is it says, this particular blueprint has done some sort of event and we can go into our manager and, and say, fire that event. That's where our uh, this guy right here, um, where I was talking about binding. So uh, um, that's where the, these two will talk to each other. So the checkpoint will talk to the manager and say, hey, I, I am done. The, the player has cleared me. And then the manager will be like, okay, cool. I got it. Let me set up the next checkpoint. Um, okay, so let's go to begin play. What we're going to do is we're going to um, do a reference to our player controller. So it's going to be the same thing we did before, which is cast to EP player controller. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're going to go to our event graph of our uh, checkpoint manager. And you can see this guy right here. We're going to copy that. I'll go back to this guy, I'm gonna do this one, and we're just gonna paste, uh, so why not? Um, and then you can see this is not blue, it's because it, there is no variable yet. So I'm gonna right click this guy and say, hey, create a variable called BP player controller. And now I have the same player controller. Um, I do need to fix the warning though, right? So this is not manager anymore, this is, uh, this is, this is BP checkpoint. Was unable to cast the BP player controller. Cool. Save. And now what do we need to do? Now we need to, um, oh, collision volume. So let's look at our collision volume here for a second. Um, what do we want? We do not want to overlap all. So um, we only want the car to go through. Let's see, we could probably get away with just, actually, no, let's do um, custom. We only want query only. Object type pawn, I think that's okay. And uh, the overlap is going to be pawn. This could be wrong, but uh, that's fine. We'll leave it like that. And then what else do we need? We need, um, actually, let's adjust the line thickness. I'm gonna put it to like two. See what that looks like. Oops. Yeah, so it looks a little bit thicker because we're actually going to have the this um, be seen in in the game. So uh, let's maybe five. Yeah, that's cool. And let's change the color from like this red. We'll do I don't know. We'll do another green. You guys can do whatever color you want. And I got to that by clicking the little show advanced compile and save. So now when I drop a checkpoint in the world, you can see it's green. <clears throat> okay. Now what do we need to do? We need to um, go to the collision volume, details panel, all the way to the bottom. And we need to say when the vehicle overlaps, we want to do it when it overlaps or no, we want to do it when the vehicle stops overlapping. Sorry, when the vehicle is done overlapping. So end overlap, end overlap. And um, we are going to, um, let's see, we should be able to do this. Vehicle selection, it should be like a switch. Let me see, switch on, switch EM, EM, there's switch on EM vehicle selection. That's what we want. Switch on EM vehicle selection. Um, and then the vehicle selection, Oh, I don't even need this vehicle selection. Let me get rid of this variable. We don't need that variable. We're gonna get it from the player controller because the player controller is one, if I remember correctly, like who's doing the, who's doing the uh, vehicle selection? Oh, it's not player controller. It's, um, it's game instance. Game instance has a vehicle selection. So that's my bad. Okay, 
So we don't need player controller. I apologize. Let's get rid of that. Look at this guy. Yes. Um, and let's get player controller. Nope, we're gonna get rid of all that. We're back to begin play. We got this. It's fine. So uh, what do we need to do? We need to get a reference of the game instance because the game instance has the vehicle selection. Um, so we're gonna just do cast to BP game instance. And it's the same idea as the player controller. Uh, this time they're gonna do get game instance. And then as game instance, we're gonna promote that to a variable and it's gonna be BP, BP game instance. And then we'll go to this fail, but we need to rewrite it. Warning BP checkpoint was unable to cast to BP game instance. instance. Okay, that looks better. Now we can go here to BP game instance and we can say, get that vehicle selection. And then we can connect it to that guy like that. And so now whichever vehicle the player picked is whichever switch is going to fire off. Um, and then now what we need to do is, um, this is actually gonna be kind of a pain, but that's okay. Um, what we'll do here is we're gonna, if it, from box truck, we're gonna do cast to BP box truck. And then from the hatchback, we're gonna do cast to BP hatchback and so on and so forth. So cast to pickup truck and sports car, cast to sports car, BP sports car. And then last one is gonna cast to BP SUV. We'll do it this way and I'll do that. And so what's gonna happen is it's going to be, um, oh, this, okay, I do need to make some changes, but that's okay. Um, it's gonna be the actor. So we're gonna do come out of actor. We're gonna do a reroute node. So add reroute node. And then from there, I'm just gonna connect the objects. Uh, what heck? Okay, that's cool. Let me, before I say anything crazy here, let me make sure that um, what I said before is actually what's going to happen. Respond current vehicle, blah, 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 blah. BP. Actually, actually, it should work because this is the pawn. So it should work. We'll see. Okay, let's go back to here. What do we need to do? Oh, we need to connect this guy like that. So then it's the actor, which is the pawn. It's going to go to the vehicle, whichever vehicle it is. And from there, we're going to do this verify, um, compl a verify completed checkpoint. And actually what we need to do here is we need to go into the verified completed checkpoint, this guy right here. And we need to um, add an input. And this is going to be our casted actor, right? Because we're casting either the box truck or the hatchback or, or the pickup or whatever it is. If I remember correctly, I have this as an actor. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I do. Okay, so casted actor, actor. And right here, object types, actor, actor reference. Okay, so now we can just connect these guys like this and duplicate this over and over and over and over. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. Okay. Okay, so let's see, let's just do a little bit of clean up here. Like this one like that. This one like that. There we go. All right. So if the cast fails, which it could, it could happen. Let's do a print string. So we're going to do print string. And what we're going to say is 
uh, warning one of the uh, vehicle casts failed inside uh, BP checkpoint. And we don't need to say it in the log, so let's turn off the print string there. Just do, oh, sorry, we don't need to say it in the print string, we just need to do it in the log. And then what we can do is just connect all these fails uh, to this print string. Cool. All right, so go through, does a verify checkpoint, and then what happens? And then um, we, um, we call checkpoint cleared. So we're gonna grab our event dispatcher called checkpoint cleared. And uh, when I drag it into the event graph, you can see I have these different values. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, meaning saying, hey, do something. Oh, we need to also make a change here. So let's go to our checkpoint cleared. And with the event dispatcher selected, go to the details panel, inputs, new parameter, and this is going to be checkpoint number. And uh, sorry, not checkpoint number. This is a uh, next uh, checkpoint uh, index. Sorry, next checkpoint index. And then this can be integer compile and save. And now you can see I have a input going into our call. So we have checkpoint number and that's gonna go into next checkpoint index like so. And then all of these are gonna to connect to our checkpoint cleared like so. And then um, our Collision volume. So we need to do, we need to do some magic with our collision volume. And actually, what we can do is um, uh, what what we're going to do is we're going to say um, where's my snipping tool again. I'm going to drop a couple of checkpoints to give you an idea of what we're going to do. Um, hello, duplicate. Thank you. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, the, player, the player goes through this particular checkpoint, right? They go through this one. All, all the other checkpoints are invisible. They're not visible at all. The, once the player goes through this checkpoint, then I'm gonna turn this one on. I'm gonna say, okay, this one's on, and now this one's off. It's gone, it's out of the world. And then the player goes through this checkpoint, and then I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna turn this one on, right? This one will be on now. And then they go through this one and I'm gonna turn it off and turn this one on and so on and so forth, right? The next one and the next one and so on, right? So, uh, so we're just gonna set visibility. The same thing we've been doing with the lighting and all that. Um, okay, so uh, what we need to do though is we need to say um, set hidden in game, set hidden in game. And we're gonna turn, and what we're doing is the player has gone through this checkpoint, right? And because they've gone through it, we're gonna hide this particular checkpoint. So we're gonna hide it. And then we're also going to turn this particular checkpoints uh, overlaps off. So we're gonna do generate overlap, uh, get, or sorry, set generate overlap events, there it is. Um, and that means that this trigger volume can no longer, um, it can no like, generate overlap events, right? Meaning that um, when the player overlaps uh, the, um, this particular trigger volume, if, if this is checked, then it'll fire events. If it's not checked, then it won't fire events. And, right, and so what we're doing is we're turning it off, we're hiding it and turning it off at the same time. All right. So that is that, and then what do we need? We need um, to go to our verified completed checkpoint function. 
And in here, we need to get our arrow. And all this is doing is just saying, hey, um, did the user go through the checkpoint correctly? Um, so we're gonna get our arrow and we're gonna say, uh, get the world rotation. Right, and this is just getting the, the direction of the arrow. And then we're gonna do a uh, get rotation uh, X, uh, X vector. That's what I'm get rotation. Oh yeah, X vector, get rotation X vector. And then uh, we're gonna get the, um, the vehicle. So this is our, the, the vehicle is our casted actor, right? See, so it's box truck or whatever, whatever vehicle it is, that's our casted actor. And we're going to get its velocity, get velocity. That's, you know, how fast it's going. And then we have this thing called dot product, right? Which um, it returns the dot product with two vectors into a float, which is what we want. Um, and then we're just going to say, hey, is this less than uh, zero? And if it is, Uh, then, um, then return. Otherwise, we need to tell the player that they went the wrong way and we'll have to a HUD. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna do return value here. So they did the right thing. Um, cool, if they did not, then we're gonna do a print string for a temporary fix. And this is just gonna go to the player. Maybe this will, maybe we'll leave this on for, you know, 15 seconds or so. Maybe it's uh, a red color, like really let the player know, hey, you did not go the right way. And we're gonna say, um, you did not cross the checkpoint correctly. Go through, actually we can do a new sentence. I'm gonna do shift enter for a new line. Go through the checkpoint correctly. Nah, we don't need that. We don't need it, we don't need it. Just leave it like that. Cool. Compile and save. And this is just a temporary thing. Temp until we have the HUD. Game HUD. Okay. <clears throat> um, is there anything else we need? No, no. No, I don't think so. That looks good. All right, what is my time? 7.32, oh, I'm doing good, doing good. Okay, let's go back to the checkpoint manager. And our checkpoint manager, we need to go back to our start sequence. Um, and hold on one second. Okay, here we are. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're getting all the checkpoints, uh, all these BP checkpoints, and out of that, we're going to get our checkpoint number. So, set, uh, sorry, set checkpoint number. And we're going to do our array index. We're going to do plus one. And so we'll do uh, int plus int. And connect like that. And go like that. Um, and so what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, the the current checkpoint I'm looking for is whatever. So we'll start at zero, then it's going to go, okay, player went through zero. Let's find number one, checkpoint number one. It's going to look for checkpoint number one and so on and so forth. Um, uh, our, then what we need to do is, uh, let's see, activate checkpoint. Where is that at? Activate checkpoint. We need this guy. And that is going to go right here to this one. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think uh, um, I actually need the correct index number, but I could be wrong. I'm almost, I'm almost certain this, this is not going to work the way I want it to. Let's see. 
I have it set up like that. So maybe, maybe that's right. That doesn't look right. What it looks like I need to do is I need to do this. That's what that's what it looks like to me. But I could be I could be wrong. Who knows? Let's do this. I'm totally grab all this and then move it down a little bit. Now I'm going to remove this because I don't have it on my reference, but I, I'm almost certain that I need it. And we'll make this look a little bit prettier. There we go. That looks better. I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it does not look right at all. This looks good too. All right. This is probably gonna come back and bite me. I'm all certain there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, blah blah blah. Start sequence. Um, blah blah blah. Okay, so now what we need to do is do that binding. So in our checkpoint, we're doing the call once the player overlaps, right? We're doing this call. And uh, in our uh, manager, we're going to do the binding. So we're going to grab uh, an array. We're going to do bind uh, to right here, event to checkpoint cleared. And um, we are going to do a add event. Oh no, I want to do create event, create event, there we go. And then we'll do a function. So create matching function. And there it is right there. We'll fix that in just a second. Let's go back to our event graph and make sure that I have this correct. So da 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 um, Actually, this only needs to fire one time. So sequence, let's see, what are we doing? Boom setup. Do I have to start sequence? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Actually, this might actually be the right way to do things. I could be totally wrong. All right, so let's go to our new function. You can see it created this weird name. We're going to rename this. This is going to be, um, uh, what is this going to be? When it's cleared, what are we doing? App check, checking to see if the race is complete. And then if so, we're going to start. So this is, uh, this is, um, I don't know, checkpoint cleared. Check. Checkpoint cleared event. That's cool. And now that our create event is planning, that's fine. Uh, well, if we go through it, you can see right here we have checkpoint cleared event. And that looks good. Pile. And now let's go to our checkpoint cleared event. And inside there, we are going to need a lap check. And we're checking the next checkpoint index. Uh, then we need our player controller. And we're going to see is the race complete? And if it is, um, oops, let's see. If it is, then we're going to do a restart. I don't know if I made, oh, I did do a restart. Awesome. And that's in our player controller. So let's go to that for a second, our restart. So right now, um, all we have is a sprint string that says, hey, the race is over, but we don't we don't have any other logic. So that's fine. For our sorry, yeah, the, the race is over, but we don't have any logic to restart the race. But that's okay, we'll come back to that later. All right, that's good. Let's look nice. There we go. File and save. All right. Now, what else do we need to do? Um, oh, activate checkpoint. Yep. So, so when the player goes through the checkpoint, we're turning it off. So let's go to that for a second. Where is that? That is. Oh, sorry. That's this one right here. So when the player goes through the checkpoint, we're turning that one off. But in our manager, we want to um, activate the next checkpoint. So we're going to turn that one on. So we're going to get our next BP checkpoint. 
we're going to uh, get our trigger volume. Uh, oh, no, sorry. What did I call it? Box collision. Wait, what did I call it? Collision volume. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. Collision volume. There it is, get collision volume. And we are going to do set hidden in game. And this one is going to be not hidden, right? And then what else? We need to uh, make sure that it is generating overlaps. Oops, not, not yet. Set generate overlaps, there we go. And that is true. So what this is doing is making it the next checkpoint. Actually, we'll do this. Making the next checkpoint dot, 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 dot. No longer hidden and able to accept overlap events. Um, okay, so, and then that's sort of like activating the next checkpoint for us. So actually, now that I have this, I, we do need to make a change in our checkpoint. So let's go back to the checkpoint. Let's go back to the collision volume. And what we need to do is we need to say, um, in the game is true, but we need to over, generate overlap events um, is no. So this means that it's hidden in the game. Player cannot see it and it does not generate overlap events. Our first, first checkpoint will come from the manager and the manager will activate that checkpoint and say, hey, you're no longer hidden and now you can start accepting overlap events. So be sure by default to turn off generate overlap events. Okay. It's looking good, looking good, looking good. Um, what do we need to do next? Let's see a lap check. Did I do any of that? I did not do any lap check stuff. So let's go to that. Excuse me. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? Let's we're gonna come out of this checkpoint here and we're gonna promote this to local variable. We're gonna just call this local checkpoint because we're gonna we're gonna use that a lot. This is gonna be a big function. Um, so what we need is our total checkpoints. And we are going to say, is the uh, current checkpoint actually, you know, we can, we can this is gonna be current current checkpoint and we'll rename this local checkpoint to local current checkpoint. So is our current checkpoint equal to the um, total checkpoints? If that's the case, then the race is done, right? So then we'll go over here and we do race complete. And the branch. And I'm getting the race complete from what we did earlier, right? So our race complete function. And if the race is not complete, then we do our checkpoints. We're gonna get a copy of our checkpoints. We're going to activate that particular checkpoint. And um, then we're going to update, oops, I need the player controller. We're going to update the laps, update laps. And um, then we need to set the respawn location, which I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, so if the current checkpoints is equal to the total checkpoints, then basically, um, well, if it's not equal, right? So it's like, Let's say total checkpoints is five and we're on lap three, then the race is not complete. So we're gonna activate the next checkpoint and update the uh, lap times and all that for that last lap the player just did. 
Um, okay, but if if it is like five total uh, checkpoints and um, oh, actually, so race complete. So I, I take that back. This is laps. This is, that's my bad. This is laps, and then this is total. Uh, oh, sorry, this is even laps. This is checkpoints. Checkpoints. That's why I'm two laps, and then this is total total laps or laps to race or whatever, laps to race complete. Yeah, so this is <laughs> the total checkpoints equals the uh, current checkpoint. If that's true, we check to see is the race complete. If the race is not complete, then we um, activate checkpoint zero, right? So the player can go through the race again. That's why this is a zero, the index is zero. Um, and then we and then we update the laps, which is this is coming from here, and we're saying, oh, is the race done? What's the lap number? You know, add one to that lap, and now the current lap total is this. Um, but if the race is complete, then we do not uh, activate the uh, you know sort of like reset it. Um, we just say, nope, the race is done. So this is sort of like. Uh, if the uh, race is not completed, then uh, start the laps over again by setting checkpoint zero as the next checkpoint. That's what this is doing. And this is basically like, is it the last last checkpoint? Um, check to see if it's also the last last lap making the race complete. And this is saying, um, is the current uh, checkpoint equal to the uh, total checkpoints. Then, uh, if, if true, true, then a lap is completed. All, cool, all sorts of cool colors here. How about, how about a green? There we go. Um, okay, but if if the laps are not done, right? I'm sorry, if the um, checkpoints are not done, then the lap is not done. And so then we'll get our checkpoints. Uh, we'll do a get a copy. Get a copy. We're gonna get our current checkpoint and say, hey, you're the next checkpoint. So activate yourself. Um, activate checkpoint. And just keep activating the next checkpoint and the next checkpoint and the next checkpoint until a lap is complete and then activate the first one. Okay. So we'll put this like this. This is basically saying uh, not all checkpoints have been uh, activated and gone through by the player. So we activate the next checkpoint. Um, cool. File and save. Okay, so uh, now what we need to do, and of course we don't have the functionality yet for respawning the car. Um, but what we're going to do is set the respawn location um, uh, for for the player. And what we need to do is we need to say that um, go back to our stipping tool. Take another picture here. So let's say the player drives. You know, it, they just drove through this checkpoint and now they're trying to get to this checkpoint. But before they get to this checkpoint, they somehow wreck them and they're upside down. 
So where should I spawn them? Well, I'm going to spawn them at the last known good location, which is going to be the last checkpoint they, they just crossed, right? So no matter where that checkpoint is, if that checkpoint is a billion miles away, you know, if it's way out here, well, too bad, you know, that's, that's where they're gonna spawn. I can't grab this, this one for some reason, there we go. All right, so like if they, that's, <laughs> this is the last known good checkpoint they went through and they have to go through here, but they somehow wrecked on the way. Oh, well, that's where I'm gonna spawn them is at that last, last known good checkpoint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our current checkpoint. We're gonna subtract it from one. Actually, I think this is not a current checkpoint. Da, 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 da. Let's see something. I may have actually labeled this incorrectly. Check. Who's doing lab check? I know I'm doing lab check somewhere. Cleared. Next checkpoint index, current checkpoint. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. This is not current checkpoint. This is next checkpoint index. Index. Because this is not, this is the next one. It's not the current one. Um, so we'll rename this well. It's gonna be local um, next checkpoint index. There we go. And now, um, okay, so now it makes sense. Like I'm minusing it by one because I'm going back, back one. I need to get the checkpoints. I need to do another getter. So get a copy, not a getter, get a copy, sorry. And then I need to get that transform, get transform, get full transform, get actor transform, there it is, get actor transform. And um, we need our controller, player controller. And we have a uh, respawn location and we're gonna set it as our new respawn location. So then this goes right there. And this one also goes right there. Cool. And so this, oops, this sets the last known good checkpoint as the respawn location, unless it's the player spawn. All right, that's good. File and save. 752, let's see, update times, got that one. Lap check, we got that, activate. Da, 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 da. Okay, it looks good. Let's, um, let's, it's not gonna work, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put, um, let's get rid of these checkpoints. I need you anymore. And here's our checkpoint manager. All right, so I've, I'm, you know, I've already had checkpoint manager in the world. Actually, I'll remove it. We'll just add a new one. Checkpoint manager in the world somewhere. Cool. All right. So we have our custom settings category. This is what we've exposed. So we're going to say max lapse is two. Gold time is uh, maybe 15 seconds or something like that, or 15 float. Um, silver time is maybe 30 and bronze like 45. Best default lap time is going to be, uh, it would be, Half of 15 is like 7.5. And best race time is going to be 15, right? It's the gold time. Name of our race is going to be called, you know, the bacon track. And then our checkpoints, you can see here we have array elements of zero. Remember, I was telling you earlier that uh, having check, uh, this not be empty is important. Right now, even though I have elements, the elements are empty. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add some checkpoints. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this one and I'm just going to duplicate. Actually, no, wait, I'm going to rename this one to one and then I'm going to duplicate. And now look at automatic, automatically numbers them for me. And I'm holding down Alt here to uh, make a couple of checkpoints. I just need a couple. That's good. Let's go back to our manager. And uh, oh, you know what? I did this wrong. 
That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna duplicate this one more time. One more time. And I'm gonna rename this to zero. There we go. We have one here and bring that a little bit more forward. And I'm gonna grab the player start, and bring that a little bit back. That's good. Okay, checkpoint manager. Zero. One, two, three, four, and five. Cool. Um, okay, so we'll hit play and let's see what happens. Oh, all the cars, they explode. What happened? Why did I get so many cars? Access gun trying to read property. System player controller. Um, oh, I don't have a cast here. Um, okay, let's see what, what's going on. Let's go to our window. We're going to go to developer tools. We're going to go to um, no um, world settings. That's what we want. Make sure this is empty. That looks good. Let's go to edit and we're gonna project settings. Oops, not editor settings, project settings. Make sure I have this right, maps and modes, default theme mode. Should be, I thought I made a new theme mode, did I not? No. You can name me, okay, player controller. That's right, player specific theme lessons. Why are you complaining? Hmm. The physics is real. Game over. Uh, let's see, then draft. Start game. Start game. Start game setup. Finds this. Start race, respawn current vehicle, but it's not finding the game instance for some reason. Hmm. Let's do. Uh... Oh, I can't do it that way. I can do this though. So we'll hit play. Now it's right here. And our game instance is empty. I'm going to hit F10. Game is empty, now it's set. Okay, you found it. That's the game instance, okay? Now you're complaining for some reason. Not sure. Definitely spawn in multiple vehicles. So. Air access train. Do I have more than one vehicle here or something? It's a possibility. Lighting, render, ship points, player start. Uh, hmm. Let's see, player controller. Respawn current vehicle, respawn location. Game instance, this one. How about a sports car? Let's change the box truck. Hit play. Let's allow you. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure why it's finding two vehicles. It's finding two of them. If we go, you can see one and two.
Uh, let's see, check my manager. Why, why are we doing that? Let me go to, this is all I can go away for now. Let's go to checkpoint manager, bent graph, wait, start time, wait time, start team, setup. Oh, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. I don't need this anymore. There we go. That's what's wrong. So I'm doing it in the game manager or the checkpoint manager, sorry. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. And we can see too that only one, uh, eject, hello? Only one checkpoint is active, right? And then once I go through it, which unfortunately I won't be able to, um, or we're still having team instance issues here. All right, so let's do this. We're going to convert this to valid git. If you're invalid for whatever reason, uh, let's go to our event graph. Let's grab all these guys. This one current vehicle, paste. We're gonna do a little warning. So print string, warning. Unable to, let's see, uh, what is this? This is uh, the their controller. So EP player controller is unable to cast. Or, or no, it's not cast. This is, uh, has an invalid um, EP game instance. There we go. And then we will connect to this guy like so. And then this will go into there. And this will be our in instance like this. And this will go like that. Let's make this a little cleaner. I'm not, uh, this is not a valid game instance. So attempt to get uh, the current game instance. Not really sure why it's failing on cast, but whatever. Oh, uh, let's do this too. I need to unplug my joysticks so I can see the wheels all turning. Uh, nope, nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so let's close this down. Save everything. Yes. I, um, 8.02. Let's open it back up. Go here. We'll go to documents. Unreal projects, racing, racing. <laughs> we could totally go and, and fix all, all that to make it say, hey, don't use any joysticks, but I do want it to use joysticks in the future. Okay, so there it is. There's our, our first um, uh, lap, or sorry. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> Doesn't detect it, shocker. All right, totally shocked. Let's go back to our checkpoint here and let's fix these bugs. So collision volume, uh, I guess pawn does not work. Let's try, we'll do, um, try world dynamic and the object type world dynamic. Might, might be able to get away with vehicle, we'll see. Hit play, let's try this again. Room, room, room. No. Quack, 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 quack. Okay. Um, try vehicle. And um, it's it's very possible too that I am doing something wrong. So let's let's uh, eject for a second. I want to look at this wait, checkpoint, so checkpoint zero. And you wanna look at the collision volume. It's not hidden in game and it is generating overlaps. Okay, so we'll make it, we made sure that's correct. So that's correct. So that's doing the right thing. Let's go back into the pond and now let's try and drive. 
Oh, okay, there it goes, now it's working. So vehicle work, cool. So you can see, of course my checkpoints are a little bit too long or whatever. And, he, and interesting that it posted the lap time. And you can see, like see all the other stuff firing off too, players current lap one and so on and so forth. So we're actually very far ahead um, in our, uh, just the basics of setting this up. We go through this again. And actually, since it's on lap one, um, you could see that, uh, right, it reset itself because we said, hey, go to, go to checkpoint zero. So then we'll go through the skin. Hopefully I don't flip uh, or get stuck, unbelievable. I definitely should have chose a different vehicle. Okay, so go through it again, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I, I didn't know it was three laps. No, we don't have a respawn yet. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Um, so that was super rapid fire and a, um, probably a lot of information thrown at you guys very quickly. Hopefully you guys um, can look at the, um, the uh, project that I'm gonna upload to uh, Google Drive here in just a second and also the YouTube video that I'll upload um, shortly. It takes, it takes a little while for Zoom to compile everything. Um, so if you don't have any, so uh, you know, go, guys go have a good weekend, check out the video and you know, grab, grab the latest project from me and uh, we will continue with like respawn and stuff like that on Tuesday. Um, so have a good weekend. And if you have any questions, just, just hang out. But otherwise have a good weekend guys and then I'll stop the recording.